From a four-story building in India that teetered on the edge of a canal, and a rare tornado in Indonesia that ripped through this tiny town, to a landslide in China that swallowed this apartment building whole, and a super typhoon near Hong Kong that blew over everything in its path. Here are 10 extreme natural disasters caught on camera. The Kolaka Regency is a large city in southeast Sulawesi province, Indonesia. It's home to about 250,000 people living along the Gulf of Boni coast. It's a wet area with frequent and heavy rainstorms. Flash floods can happen at any moment. One of those floods struck on January 20th of 2024. Locals in a small village along the Ulu Konowiha River watched as the water level rose and rose. Soon, it was nearly as high as the bridge. That's when one of them noticed a building floating their way. The flood began shortly after a deluge of heavy rain. The riverbanks burst, causing a massive surge of water to rush toward these villages. Thankfully, the people inside the floating house had already evacuated and were staying with a relative. Hundreds of others found themselves in similar situations. The flood left their homes filled with water. They fled to higher ground for their own safety with whatever they could carry. One day, East Asian contractors will learn that they shouldn't build houses on landslide-prone hills. Unfortunately, many of these poorly placed homes already exist, and it's only a matter of time before landslides consume them all. One of those buildings came down on September 6th of 2021 in the prefecture-level city of Ankang, China. About 1.2 million people live in rural areas outside the main city. A handful were looking for a place to stay after a landslide tore down their apartment building. You can see where part of the building is bulging out as the foundation weakens. These locals are lucky the collapse didn't cause any collateral damage. Thankfully, officials noticed the cracks and evacuated the building before it fell. It's unclear what happened to those inside and if they were set up with somewhere to stay. It's hard to imagine losing everything in one fell swoop. Hopefully, the homeowners had family members they could lean on. Super Typhoon Mankut arrived in Southeast Asia with a vengeance. It was the strongest to land in the Philippines since 2016 and the worst typhoon to affect Hong Kong since 1983. Mankut was the fourth super typhoon of the very active 2018 season. Their position on the coast puts cities like Hong Kong and Guangzhou in Mankut's path of destruction. Those brave enough to record the storm as it happened show what it's like to wake up in a real-life nightmare. Even those on the inside weren't safe from the 120 mile per hour winds. Once the wind died down, Mankut brought widespread flooding to the Chinese streets. 
Roads that were usually filled with cars looked more like rivers. In the end, the super typhoon caused about $3.77 billion worth of damage across several nations. Due to its strength, the name Mankut was officially retired in 2019. Jatinangor, Indonesia is a small district east of Bandung, the capital of West Java. It's home to the Jatinangor National Flower Park, a popular attraction full of bright colors, beautiful gardens, and a long rainbow slide for kids. It's a testament to how gorgeous Mother Nature can be when she wants to. But, as we all know, Mother Nature has an ugly side. On February 21st of 2024, a tornado touched down south of the National Flower Park in the village of Chintamulia. It kicked up debris and loose objects as it moved through the crowded town. Those who felt safe enough used the opportunity to record the storm. Local government officials said the tornado was of a scale previously unrecorded. We assume that means they'd never seen one this strong. After all, tornadoes, even weak ones, are rare in Indonesia. They're typically more concerned with earthquakes, volcanoes, and typhoons. Thankfully, nobody was seriously injured during the storm. The tornado, which lasted for 20 minutes and hit wind speeds upwards of 40 miles per hour, damaged 116 buildings. Officials said that hundreds of families were impacted in some way. Some of them were enjoying time at home when their roofs just disappeared. Mother Nature may produce some truly stunning sights, but she has a funny way of reminding us who's boss when she wants to. Pescadero, California is a small town in San Mateo County. It has a population of under 600 and is about 50 miles south of San Francisco. It is a mountainous town known for long, winding roads leading from the hills to the coast. On January 17th of 2023, San Mateo firefighters were called to the site of a large crack in the road. The night before, a winter storm had weakened the ground beneath the pavement, causing it to crack and slide down the hill. Since there was nothing he could do, one of the firefighters began recording. The area had already experienced several powerful storms over the last few days. Relentless rain led to flooding, mudslides, and landslides like this one. It was so bad that President Biden approved a major disaster declaration in California. That meant locals could tap federal funds to help their recovery efforts. The situation didn't improve. By Monday, tens of thousands of people had evacuated their homes. Sometimes, California can be a tough place to live. If the wildfires don't get you in the summer, the floods and landslides might get you in the winter. While Typhoon Mankut did most of its damage with wind, Typhoon Lakima decided to use overwhelming amounts of water. Rampant flooding impacted over 1.6 million people in eastern China, specifically in the city of Weifang in Shandong province. Lakima loomed over the Shandong area for several days. Rain fell relentlessly, which quickly overwhelmed all the rivers and drainage systems. All that water needed somewhere to go. It tore down several buildings and bridges, washed away people's cars, and destroyed a local landmark, the Juyuehu Pavilion. I wanna, 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 wanna. Yeah. 
。哇，可完了！In the end, Lakima went down as the third costliest typhoon in Chinese history, with a total damage bill of $10.6 billion when adjusted for inflation. Like Mankut, the name Lakima was retired the year after it struck. This retirement ceremony commemorates the damage it caused and the lives it claimed upon making landfall. It's similar to how we retire Atlantic hurricane names. There's a reason you'll never see another Hurricane Katrina. Just like you'll never see another typhoon, Lakima. In real estate, they say location, location, location. That's because where a building is located can make or break a sale. This Indian businessman should have realized that buying a four-story home on the edge of an irrigation canal was a lousy investment. On June 13th of 2020, locals in eastern India watched in horror as their homes leaned closer to the canal's edge. Apparently, some recent dredging work had destabilized the building. Someone should have probably checked before digging that deeply into the foundation. Some reports say the building was still under construction. Its proximity to the canal violated the state of West Bengal's building regulations. In other words, they built it illegally. The collapses ultimately happened after a heavy rainstorm moved through the area. It eroded the canal wall, leading to the collapse. Workers still dug too close to the building while excavating the canal. In fact, locals spotted several cracks in the foundation two days before the rainstorm. The rain may have done this building in, but a string of bad decisions ultimately dug its grave. Baoding, China, is a prefecture-level city in Hebei Province. The name translates roughly to "protecting the capital," referring to Baoding's proximity to Beijing. The name stems from the Yuan Dynasty, after Mongols captured, destroyed, and rebuilt the city. On July 21st of 2021, the rural parts of Baoding did a good job of protecting the capital when a rare tornado touched down. It's unclear how this storm compared to tornadoes in the United States, but it was strong enough to damage buildings and knock out power to an entire village. Aftermath footage shows what happens when a small Chinese village gets hit by a tornado they were grossly unprepared for. Buildings came down, the roads flooded, and cars were damaged beyond repair. The storm also knocked down as many utility poles as it could. Imagine trying to clean and untangle that mess to restore the village's power. Now, tornadoes may be rare in China, but they pack a punch when they strike. That's because the infrastructure isn't built to deal with these storms. All anybody can do is hope their home doesn't get carried away with the wind. Amurang, Indonesia, is the capital of the South Minahasa Regency. It's a coastal town on North Sulawesi Island with a population of about 16,000. The most densely populated area is along the Celebes Sea coastline, and while the sea offers scenic views, it can be unforgiving at times. 
Waves coming off the Celebes Sea had been eroding the coast for years. Add some greedy sand miners into the mix, and you're looking at a catastrophe waiting to happen. The sandbars finally broke on June 15 of 2022. Fifteen families watched their homes sink into the sea. <laughs> What you saw was just the tail end of the destruction that plagued Amurang that day. According to reports, 15 buildings fell into the water, including several homes and a hotel. Erosion also swallowed the road built along the coastline. Aftermath footage shows floating wood and debris surrounding the coastal neighborhood. You might think a ship sank and washed up on the shore if you didn't know any better. Thankfully, nobody fell in with any of those buildings. Local environmental officials suggested planting mangroves to prevent more erosion. The strong roots act like a natural barrier, preventing waves from lashing against the coastline. Bijie, China is a prefecture-level city in Guizhou province. It's home to about 6.5 million people who all lived through a terrifying wildfire in February of 2024. The fire began on February 18th, springing local firefighting crews into action, and they weren't the only ones. Many locals and volunteers joined the battle as the fire loomed closer to the main city. While they were hard at work, one local recorded the fire as they drove through patches of thick smoke. Meanwhile, firefighters worked through the night and into the morning. They sawed through trees and scaled steep hillsides to establish isolation belts to keep the fire from spreading. All the while, they battled strong wind and thick clouds of smoke. The smoke was so dense that it prevented helicopters from flying overhead. Our firefighters were on their own. Local reports said that BGA police were looking into the cause of the fire. The job may fall in their lap by default, but the headline suggests foul play. It's unclear how large an area the fire burned or how much damage it caused. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.